Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Live. I'm Dr. Cindy Wan, a fourth year pathology resident. And today I want to talk about the financial aspects of residency a little bit. I could share my uh, income as a resident. It's not that hard to find out how much you will make as a resident um, because you'll be able to see on the GME website for whichever program you want to apply to, how much you'll be paid as a first year, second year, third year, fourth year, throughout however many years of uh, residency you will have to go through. For example, I'm looking at my own GME website right now for the year 2020 to 2021. And as a PGY4, which means postgraduate year four, um, I am making $71,000 and that's a really good amount of money. When I started my residency program, four years ago, I think my starting salary was 58. So I did get a decent pay bump um, over the years. In terms of residency, if you look at these websites, um, you'll notice that every year up you go, you get paid slightly more. So that's kind of like saying like, oh, you've done one year and now you have this much knowledge. So your your work value is now like say $2,000 more than what you were last year. On top of that, I felt like in my in the four years I've been here, not only have my salary been going up by like 2000, the base salary is also going up a little bit more too, because for example, when I started my base salary as a PGY1 was 58. Right now, the base salary for a PGY1 is 61. So there's a range of residency salaries. For example, when I was applying for residency, there was a program in New York City that offered $81,000 as their starting PG-1 salary. But of course, that's also accounting that it's in New York City and you probably end up having to live in New York City and New York City is expensive. So $81,000 doesn't get you very far. And given that residents work very long hours, usually between 50 to 60 hours up to 80 hours, if you like divide that out in a year, uh, the amount of hours we work and how much we make, it comes to be slightly more than 15 to $23 an hour. And you could find out any salary, any resident make in any program by simply Googling their program name uh, and add GME house staff stipend. And that will take you to their GME website. And they'll generally have a chart of how much their PG one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever makes. I do have a few words of advice, especially for the people who are currently applying for medical school and people who are already in medical school. So the first one would be if you're applying for medical school, honestly, I feel like nowadays it doesn't really matter where you go for medical school as long as you do well and you learn and you do other things you'll end up going to residency somewhere and it doesn't matter if you want to like a name brand school or you went to a state school i feel like it's better if you can to go to your state school because state school just costs that much less than a big name private school so for example, I went to Rutgers, New Jersey Medical School, which is a state school. And I think I end up taking out the bare minimum every uh, year for student loans. And I end up having 175-ish thousand dollars in student debt loan when I graduated. And my husband who went to Georgetown, which is a private university, he ended up having $360,000 when he graduated. So he basically almost doubled mine. So in combination, the two of us basically have half a million dollars in student loans, which is like a mind boggling amount of money. As easy as it is to get student loans, the student loan interest rates are not by any definition good like for example i think my student loan interest rates were like five six percent uh now that i'm in repayment if i make a payment that is less than the monthly interest on my principal then actually a chunk of that interest that i didn't pay back will now be added to my principal and it's like a forward feeding horrible loop the, basically it's easier on you in your future if you took out less money as you start in medical school. So the easiest way to do that is go to your state school. Um, my advice for people who are already in medical school is try not to spend like you are the doctor that you want to be. And you're not making that 200, 300, 400, $500,000 salary yet. So try not to spend like one, you know, spend what you need. I'm not saying don't treat yourself. Medical school is hard and you should treat yourself every now and then. Just think about what you're spending and where you're getting that money from. If 
everything you're spending now is being come out of student loans don't don't take out that extra five ten thousand dollars a year in student loans so you can live that better life when you think about it you're accruing interest on that five thousand extra dollars a year and that end up being way more than five thousand dollars by the time you could pay that off in residency it's very hard to make student loan repayments that would not only cover the interest accrued monthly but also make it then into your principal my advice is just to be more conscious and don't take out more student loans as needed if you're almost done with med school and it's time to pick a loan repayment plan really as a resident i think it's the easiest if you do one of those pay or repay programs which is basically adjusting your monthly payments to based on your salary and as you know residents we don't make that much salary so they will adjust how much you have to pay back and you end up usually depending on how much you have in your student loans for example me and my husband we pay around like 200 something to 400 something a month. My one last thing of advice is that really save towards retirement because we are already, as people who went into medicine, that much uh, behind compared to the, our friends and other peers who went straight to the workforce. I understand no one wants to think about retirement because you know we're still so young, but we have a lot of years and money to make up for. So I would definitely recommend every year as a resident to definitely do your Roth RA because well, as much as we don't want to think about it, we're going to get old and we're going to eventually want to retire. Not every one of us wants to work until um, we're 65. So the earlier we start saving, the earlier you can consider retiring. I hope that this was educational and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.